part two of how to play the alto saxophone. Uh, we're going to start off right away with how to open the case. Uh, it seems kind of silly how do you open a case, uh, but it's important because the saxophone could fall out and get damaged in the process, and we don't want that to happen. So, let's talk about how to open it. Now, I have my case right here. It's on the floor, which is where you would want to have it to, um, to get started. So, the first thing you notice is that the case is just flat on the ground. Um, because it's a bigger case, you don't want to try and have it in your lap and have it and the instrument. You're going to cause a problem. So how do we know which side is the top side? Well, there's a couple of clues. Number one, there's a logo right here. And sometimes uh, on cases, the logo is on the top side. Let's just take a look and see here. So there's the logo. And if we look on the back side, there's no logo. It's all just black. So that's a pretty good clue that this is the top. The next clue is that this handle right here is on the bottom part of the case because you don't want to open a case and have a handle flopping around so they put the case or the handle on the bottom part of the case and the next clue is when you have this kind of latch that latches over the top and then latches down like this they usually put the swinging part on the bottom again so when you open the case it doesn't flap all around so those are a few clues on how to know which way is the right way let's open this up now that we know for sure that this is the top you'll see the instrument in there. You'll notice first right away that this instrument is in a, in a section of the case that's just molded for it so that it's not going to move around. As a matter of fact, if I wiggle a little bit, it doesn't even move. The case moves, but it's not moving in there. And that's to protect it, to keep it from, from um, becoming damaged in the case. You'll also notice there's no book or any kind of thing in here on top of it because if you see, this is, this is made just so that it fits just that instrument. And if you put a book or something there, it's going to smash down some of these rods or keys and damage the instrument. So, so make sure that you keep it put it in the right places, in the right ways, and don't put anything in with it. So now that we know how to get the instrument out of the case, let's talk about how we do that and what, what the order is to make sure we keep our instrument safe. The first thing I like to do with a saxophone is grab the neck strap. Now, neck straps come in lots of varieties. This is just one. But grab the neck strap and put it on, okay, right away. And that's gonna make sure you're ready to go. Then I'm gonna grab the saxophone. And you can kind of hold it by the bell and then also kind of gently around the keys. You don't wanna wrench down on any of these keys, you can't bend them and it'll cause a problem. So the first thing you do after you grab it is on the back there's this little neck strap ring. And this this is where you attach your neck strap. The neck strap will have a hook or a clip or something like that. And so the first thing you do, after you put your neck strap on, get the instrument out, hook it right to there. Now, my hands can be free and my saxophone isn't going anywhere. I'm not gonna drop it. Um, on page two of your book, it goes through some of these things. It goes through what the different parts of the saxophone are and um, also kind of a, a step for doing all this. Okay, uh, one of the first things you should have done, and I forgot to tell you, when you're getting ready, is to take out your reed. Your reed should come in a case, and we'll talk more about reeds and cases in a minute. But you take it out of its case gently, and you put it in your mouth. You get both sides wet, and then leave it in your mouth like that. Now I'm going to take it out so I can talk. Um, but you do that because they're getting the reed moistened helps you to play it once you get started. Now, um, for the first couple times you do this, you put your instrument on in the neck strap and all this, don't worry about the reed, okay? Because, because the reed can ship and break, and we'll, again, we'll talk about that. But practice a few times without the reed, and we'll talk more about the reed later, okay? So, and that's why I forgot, because I knew that we don't need to have right now. So, when you get your sides on it, it should have one of these little caps right here, okay? And this cap, is to protect this octave key um, function that sticks up past where the saxophone goes. And if you don't, if you don't put that cap in there when you put it away, there's a chance you could bend this and make it for, so your saxophone doesn't play. But you have to take it out in order to play. So you take this out, and I always put it right where the saxophone goes in the case, not in the little pocket. Sometimes you have little pockets. I put it right where the saxophone goes. 
Because that way when I'm putting the saxophone away, I'll see it or I won't, the saxophone won't fit because the thing's in the way and it'll remind me, oh yeah, put the cap back on, okay? So that's what I do. The next thing you do is you take the neck. This is the neck and you just slide it on here. Now, sometimes it's a little snug and it won't go on. Um, usually you can just loosen the screw and it should go on. And if it still doesn't go on, you can put a little bit of cork grease on there um, just to get it to go on. Um, and sometimes just a little twisting will help it to go on. Careful not to bend this octave key. Okay, and then when you get it on there, just lightly tighten this screw. It doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to keep it from flopping around. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our, our mouthpiece. Now your mouthpiece should come with a cover like this. That's to help it dry out correctly. So you take the cover off, put it back where it goes. Then you have your mouthpiece looks like this. Uh, the mouthpiece also has a ligature and we'll talk about how that ligature works in a second. And you just take that mouthpiece and you put it on onto this section here of the, of the neck. It has a cork. Now this saxophone is pretty new and this isn't wanting to go on. That's pretty normal because the, the cork is pretty new and it's not going to work. So if that's the case with yours, you have a new instrument, um, you can get this cork grease. You should have some cork grease with your saxophone. If it's brand new, it'll probably have cork grease in the case. Um, and you can put a little bit of that, not a lot, but just a little bit on that cork to help the mouthpiece go on a little more smoothly. You don't need to put cork grease on every time you play. Just a little bit um, to get that mouthpiece to go on. And then if it doesn't seem to get better, um, then maybe put a little more later on. Okay, so put a little put that on there. And you put it on a ways. It's not, it's not just barely on the tip of the cork. Get it on so that the mouthpiece is snug so it's not gonna fall off. So you got the mouthpiece on, put the ligature back on the mouthpiece. And this is when, if you've been, if you've had that, that reed in your mouth, you're gonna take that reed and you're gonna put it on the mouthpiece. Now when you're practicing, you don't need to do this, but I'm gonna show you a little bit about where that reed goes on the mouthpiece and how to make sure it's lined up correctly. Okay, so we have our mouthpiece on there. We have our ligature and we have our reed. So what I do is I take this ligature here and I just slide it up onto the mouthpiece, not all the way off, just up a little bit. Then I take this reed, the flat end against the, against the mouthpiece, and I just stick it in there. So I just slide it in between the, the ligature and the, and the mouthpiece, and I push it down. And I just keep my other thumb down here so it doesn't fall all the way through, and I can hold it with that thumb. And then you kind of line it up where it goes, which I'll show you shortly and then you slide that ligature down and, make, and then you tighten it. So let's talk about where that reed goes. So to line that up, it, you, you take the bottom part here and make sure it's lined up um, uh, on the bottom so it's not too far this way and it's not too far that way. There's a flat section of your, of your mouthpiece that um, you can line it up with. And once you get that in the right spot, I like to just hold it there because when you move this end, then sometimes it'll move that too. So get that lined up, then line up the, the top part of your reed so it's also lined up with the mouthpiece, not too far this way or that way, just in the right spot, okay? And then the next thing you wanna do is make sure it's not too far off or on. So the way you do that is when you line it up, you make it so there's a little bit of sliver of black on that mouth, on that, that you can see the mouthpiece behind the reed. And I'll show you that as soon as I get this lined up here. Okay, so, and what I mean by that is, as you're looking, here's my, here's my saxophone. So I'm looking flat at the saxophone, at the mouthpiece. I want to make sure that there's, I can see a little sliver of black above that reed. Okay, above the reed. So I'll show you on the camera here. So as you, as you line that up, you want to make sure there's just a little bit of black up there, okay? So um, let me show you, if, if you had it too high, it might look something like, something like this as you look at it. See how, how tall that is? Actually, you can even see some light coming through it. If you were to do it like that, 
what's going to happen is um, that's going to get shipped real easy as well as it's just not going to play right. It's not going to work. Okay, that's too too far off. Okay, and then the the other problem would be too far on, and it would look something like. You know, like this. This is maybe extreme a little bit, but it's too far on there. See how much black there is above the reed here? Okay, that's not going to play correctly either. So you want to get it lined up just right in the right spot. And then once you do get that lined up, then you just take this ligature. So, so this ligature, we just have it nice and loose while we're lining this thing up so it doesn't make it hard to line up and then you just push that ligature down so it's on the reed in the right spot and the right spot is notice that there's on this set in this mouthpiece not all mouthpieces are this way but there's a little cut out here so this has got to be definitely below that you don't want it sticking above that and another clue is on your reed there's a cut out portion of the reed here and I want my ligature far enough down so it's not covering any of that also the screws of the ligature typically go on this side of the reed Okay, on, on the top of the reed, not back here. Okay, the screws go up here. Um, some reeds are, excuse me, some ligatures are different, and there are some that have screws on the back end, but those are made specifically for that purpose. Um, and so if you have a ligature you think is a little different, then let me know, I'll help you with that. So that you can start with everybody, and you're not dragging behind. And then the next thing is, it's important that you um, can put it away in a timely manner so that you can get to your next class on time so you're not late. Um, so practicing getting it all put together, getting the, getting the neck strap ready, hooked on, and just getting ready to go, and then being able to put it away quickly without damaging a reed or anything is important. So we just go in reverse order. Get your reed case. Take off your reed. You just loosen these. And when you tighten these ligature screws, they don't need to be real tight. They just need to be just snug, just so that the, the reed will stay on there. Okay, I have had students break their ligature screws because they tighten them too tight. So you take your reed, always put a reed back in its reed case or in a, or in a specific speci specially made reed case. Put that back in your case. There's usually a little pocket or a, or a spot for it. Okay, then take off your mouthpiece. Just Sometimes you just have to twist it a little bit. This one again is new, so it doesn't want to come off super well, but it'll come off. Put it back, the mouthpiece in its mouthpiece case and put that where it goes. Okay. Next, you're going to take off the neck, um, loosen the screw, and maybe just twist a little bit should come off. And then, this is when I'm going to grab my, my cap and put it back in. And then I'm going to unhook my neck strap, put the sax one in its case where it goes in the right way, and then take my neck strap off and put my next strap away. Dang it, I forgot. Hey, is that door shut? Yes. Oh, I think, what am I hearing? take a swab. Now this is a saxophone swab right here. It's, it's basically a cloth with strings on it. Okay. And in this swab, it has a little weight on the, on one, on one end. And that weight is to help you get the, get this through the instrument. And I'll show you how to do that. So with it still connected with my neck strap so that I don't drop it, you drop this weight into the bell here. It's a little tricky here because it's got to drop down to the bottom of the saxophone, down here. And you want to give enough room for it to go down and then come back up the other way. And here it is. And then you just gently, now before I pull it through, make sure your swab is smoothed out. It's not all crumpled up before you put, it, put this through there. If it's all crumpled up, um, a lot of times it can get stuck. So you make it nice and smooth, and then you just pull that swab through the 
the saxophone. And you can do that a couple times, um, just real quick. It doesn't take long once you get the hang of it. You know, you just get that in there, comes out the end, pull it through real easy, okay? So you swab it every day. When you're done with that swab, sometimes it might be a little moist, might have some moisture on it. So I just set it either on my stand or even on the top part of the case while I'm putting the rest of the saxophone away. It'll air dry just a little bit. Um, take the cap here, put it on after you've swabbed it, and unhook it from your, from your neck strap and put it back in the case. Okay. Make sure you don't forget to take off your neck strap. But a lot of students uh, wear their neck strap to their next class. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Then you can take your swab, because it's got to go away too. You're going to fold that and just fold it up, however works for you. And put that back in your case for the next time. Don't forget to. Don't forget to latch the case, and then you're ready to go put it away. Um, so practice that a few times. Make sure you're um, swabbing it out and, and you're practicing swabbing it so you can do that fairly quickly and you're getting everything put away so you can be ready to go on to the next thing, okay? Once you get familiar with putting it together and taking it apart, um, it makes it a lot easier in band, so it's not this new part of it. That's That's the... That's the easy part of playing an instrument. So we want to make sure we're, we're familiar with that as good as we can. Sometimes your saxophone might come with a, some saxophones come with a long fuzzy thing that goes inside the saxophone. Um, and depending on the area you live in, um, depends on whether or not you need that. In our area, the area that I teach in, in, in CUNA, Idaho, we don't need to put that in. As a matter of fact, sometimes that can make your, your keys actually stay moist and end up um, ruining your saxophone. So if you have one like that, just use that to swab it out and then leave it uh, on the side in your case. Some, most of the time it'll still fit in your case on the side of the saxophone. Um, and then also sometimes you have a little brush or a little swab type thing that you can use for your neck. You can do that really quick um, and just make sure that you get the moisture out of it for the most part when you put it away um, and that'll help, help your saxophone last for a long time. Um, other than that, sometimes you have extra cloths, you can just kind of wipe the outside down really quick. And you don't need to do that every day, just every once in a while. If it looks like it's getting a little dirty or something, just wipe it down and you're good to go. So practice those things and um, on the next video we'll talk about how to hold it and, uh, and I'll see you on that one.